out of the 50 states, Hawaii is the one state that is largely not mentioned in much capacity in regards to its acquisition and later statehood. And outside of the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, isn't really mentioned much at all in detail. But how exactly did America get its 50th state? In this video, we'll be answering just that question. The settlement of Hawaii is debated to some degree, with ranges of settlement from 50 ACE all the way up to 950 ACE. By the year 1000, coastal farms were in existence, but it wasn't certain to what degree the isles themselves were settled for some time. By the 1500s, the interior of the Hawaiian Islands started to be settled, and eventually, each of the main islands were ruled by a native king. Captain James Cook was the first to discover the islands in the late 1770s, which, on the fourth voyage of his, is where he was killed following a dispute over a longboat. The Kingdom of Hawaii was established in 1795, with Kamameha the first acting as king. He waged a 15-year war to unify the entire archipelago, and Catholic missionaries started to flood into the island shortly after, causing a large section of the native population to die off due to disease. With a steady decline of population for over a hundred years, as trade with other countries, primarily exporting sugar, fueled the economy. The political unity of the island was rather strong, but during the tenure of Queen Kamamea, Catholic citizens were only given partial rights, with sections of the elite being Protestant. This led to French intervention in 1839 and 1849, and British occupation for a few months in 1843. Following the British occupation, Hawaii was recognized as independent by the US, France, and Britain, being the only non-European nation for the European powers to recognize at that time. American influence in the Hawaiian government began with US plantation owners demanding a say in kingdom politics, and led to the land being divided up largely by the say of local missionaries, leaving only 2% of the land to the common people, with the rest being split between the nobility and the sugar plantations. US control of Hawaii was considered vital for the defense of its west coast, especially Pearl Harbor, and it entered into a variety of negotiations to attempt to gain the islands directly under their influence or control. At the same time, the political unity on the island was being heavily hit, as twice in 1872 and two years later, the king of the islands died without naming an heir, and so an election was called for. With a small rebellion in response to the previous queen not winning, a rebellion that was put down by American British troops, followed shortly by the Reposity Treaties of 1875, while allowing Hawaiian sugar to have free access to the American market, something that caused the sugar industry on the islands to boom tenfold, leading to even more plantation control over the political landscape. In January of 1887, the U.S. began to lease Pearl Harbor, followed shortly by a rebellion against the king in July, which forced through a new constitution, a constitution that heavily weakened the king's powers, empowering the legislator and cabinet of the government, giving the public the power to vote in legislators. Kind of. This new constitution did allow foreign residents to vote, but blocked Asians as a whole from voting, who made up a fair chunk of the island's population. It also reinstated the literacy and personal wealth requirements for voting, and increased them nearly ten times over, meaning that essentially, only white males, wealthy from the sugar industry, retained suffrage. While it allowed the monarchy to still technically exist, its power was severely limited. Queen Lilalu Lukani acceded to the throne in January of 1891, who merely received petitions from the native Hawaiian population for a new constitution. Over the next two years, she attempted to draft and gather support for a new constitution, but was constantly blocked by the legislator. And a section of European and American settlers established the quote-unquote Committee of Safety who sought the island annexation into the United States, drawing from the same party that forced through the 1887 Constitution. 
In late January of 93, the committee called upon 1,500 men and overthrew the Queen with assistance from U.S. Marines. The Queen was banished and imprisoned in her palace again. The Marines acted as guards, and the Republic of Hawaii was proclaimed shortly after, with the goal of annexation within the United States. By this time, Grover Cleveland had become president, and Cleveland was anti-imperialist and thought Americans had acted shamefully in Hawaii. He withdrew the annexation treaty from the Senate and ordered an investigation into potential wrongdoing, but of course, the investigation led to nothing. Cleveland had aimed to restore the Queen to her throne. A counter-revolution in the three-day Wilcox Rebellion was an attempt to overthrow the president on the island and re-establish the monarchy's role. The rebellion failed after three main battles, and the Queen officially abdicated. The matter was prolonged until after Cleveland left office. When war broke out with Spain in 1898, the military significance of Hawaiian naval bases as a way station outweighed all other considerations. President William McKinley signed a joint resolution annexing the islands, much like the manner in which Texas joined the Union in 1845.